In this matter of pornography and masturbation orgasm, which I'm going to title PMO for brevity's sake, we've been trying to help men understand uh, how and why they get into this uh, decades-long cycle of success and failure in the area of pornography and masturbation, PMO. Uh, and we've made the case that um, men who are in a no uh, definition of this practice as opposed to never, uh, it's a temp no means temporarily. And a temporary commitment to get past and get beyond PMO is just not going to be blessed by the Holy Spirit. And there's a very small likelihood that you're going to be able to do it uh, from a, a, a temporary no posture. The posture that God would want you to be is in the posture of saying, no, I'm never going to do this. And we've been, and uh, one of the reasons why men have a difficulty going there is because they're not thinking clearly and accurately and biblically about this matter of PMO. And we've looked at three passages and trying to bring that clarity that will bring them uh, to the conviction of letting go of that temporary no and to get themselves into a permanent never to do this sort of posture that the scriptures encourage us to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today we're going to look at a fourth passage, and it's in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, if you can follow with me, uh, verse 3, uh, and um, verse 5 reads as follows. We're going to start with verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1 says this, Be imitators of God, 5, 1 of Ephesians. Therefore is dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice of God. Now the next word in verse 3 is but. So he's going to tie in the fact that we're God's people, we're holy people, we're chosen people, we're loved people. But he says, but because of that, he says, among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any uh, kind of sexual impurity or of sexual greed uh, because of these because these are improper for God's holy people. Now, there's that word sexual immorality again, as we said earlier. Whenever you see that word sexual immorality, it means a broad variety of sexual sins, including adultery if you're a married man, fornication or sexual immorality if you're a single man or woman, as well as PMO, uh, pornography, masturbation, orgasm, which would fall under that umbrella PMO, under the term sexual immorality. Now, the NIV translates this passage, there must not even be a hint of such a thing uh, among you. Uh, let's see, verse 3. But among you there must not even be a hint of PMO. There must not even be a hint. Now, the, the translators are taking some liberty the act, uh, in translating it that way. The original language says that among you there must not be be named among you sexual immorality, sexual impurity, and sexual greed. Or another way, it says there, there uh, must not be any mention of this among you as you're living out your lives as God's holy people. Now, though the word hint is not in the original language, I think the New International Version translators are taking what that means and putting it in our language and i think it's fair to do that in this case and the way they're doing it is in this case and so what this is doing is helping us to think clearly and that is to say regarding this matter of adultery there must not even be a hint of adultery mentioned among you as families in this particular church and the churches across the world there must not even be a hint of adultery there must not even be a hint of premarital sex taking place among the singles community in our churches. It should not even be mentioned or named, and there should not even be a hint that such a thing is taking place. There should not even be a hint of an idea uh, that, or uh, mentioned among uh, God's people that men and women are doing PMO. There should not even be a hint of that among the churches in Galatia, Colossia, and Philadelphia, and Los Angeles, and Minneapolis, and wherever you happen to be as a Christian. So what, what brings into clarity here that we haven't seen so clearly in previous chapters, and that is we're, we're being told in not, no uncertain terms that there's not even to be a smidgen of this being mentioned here. That is to say all things are really, this is completely out of bounds, that there would be adultery, premarital sex, and PMO. 
mentioned among you. Now, why this is helpful is because I think among many, if not most men who do PMO, they have the philosophy of PMO like you might have uh, in other ways where you've heard the phrase, all things in moderation, which is not a biblical thing, by the way, not a phrase. But the, the people, good people say, well, all things in moderation. And what that means is we're permitted to do certain things, but we should not do them excessively. And here's an example of that. I believe that the Bible says that men and women are allowed to drink alcohol. I think that's something that we're permitted to do, but we are told that we're not to do that excessively and be getting drunk or to be addicted to that for sure. And so in the middle is learning where you fit and how you can drink, where you drink and how much you can drink in moderation so that you don't uh, become legalistic to think that you can't do that, but that you don't do that in excess. So in cases of alcohol and drinking, I would say we are permitted to drink in moderation, uh, and that would, we can do that according to God's word. But I think men take masturbation, and whether they say it in those terms, they kind of down deep believe that. Well, I'm not in excess about this. I think it's okay to do it, and I'm only doing it moderately. I'm not hurting anybody, and I can do it in moderation as long as I'm not really excessive. And also lying to them saying, I can stop this anytime that I want to. But as long as it's in moderation, it's okay. That's not what this passage is saying. This passage isn't saying, as God's holy people, keep your sexual immorality to moderate in uh, terms of moderation. It's not saying that. It's saying in regards to adultery and premarital sex and PMO, there's not even to be a hint of this mentioned or being done by the people, uh, the men and the women who are filling up the churches. It's very helpful to get this perspective from this particular verse. This is something that we're not to be doing in moderation. There's not even to be a hint of this mentioned among men and women uh, in the church and who claim to be God's holy people. Now, again, one other place of perspective that I think we need to look at here. He then talks about uh, verbal sins. Then he goes to this and says this in verse 5. For of this, you can be sure. He's saying, now, you, you can bet the farm on this one. There should be no confusion about this. This has to be crystal clear in your mind. For of this you can be sure that no sexually immoral person, sexually impure or sexually greedy person, such a man as idolater, has any inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and of God. And so Paul's doing it again here. And we mentioned this in an earlier passage, uh, videos. Anytime this word sexual immorality is brought up, again, including adultery, premarital sex, and PMO, there's always the warning. If you do this, if you persist in this, if this is your practice, if this is your habit, if this is your addiction, you can be sure that this person will not inherit the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Christ. He has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And so here it is again. In case we didn't understand it from Galatians and Corinthians and Thessalonians and Revelations and other verses, okay, he says it again in Ephesians. The man who does this, practices this, lives this way, does this moderately, PMO, he will have no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. But here's something that's very helpful to us as well. He says the man who does this is an idolater. Did you hear that? For this you can be sure, no sexually immoral, sexually impure, sexual greedy person, such a man, is an idolater. Well, Paul makes trying to help us to think very, very clearly and very, very accurately about this matter of PMO for our purposes here. And that is, the man who does PMO is committing spiritual idolatry. If he's a married man and doing PMO, He's committing marital adultery, but he's also committing spiritual idolatry. And that is to say, the man who is sexually immoral, for our purposes, PMO, he's abandoning God, he's loving on and worshiping a different God, and he's committing spiritual idolatry in the process. PMO is very, very, very much a spiritual matter. When I am doing it, I am committing spiritual idolatry. When you're doing it in moderation, you are doing it in 
you are committing spiritual idolatry. If you do it infrequently, when you do it, you're committing spiritual idolatry. When you do it as an addiction, you are addicted to spiritual idolatry. You abandon God in committing idolatry. And, and that term is very, very helpful. We need to be, it needs to be very clear to us that if you're a married man, you're committing PMO, you're doing adultery and idolatry. But if you're a single man and you're doing PMO, then you're committing idolatry. And such a man, we're told here over and over again, of this you can be sure, will not inherit uh, have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. These are hard things to look at and hard things to hear, but uh, but they're accurate things of which we oftentimes are confused about, uh, we're deceived about, uh, we're lying to ourselves about, and in order to be set free, we need to see these matters with clarity so that we move from, no, I'm only going to do this moderately to, I've got to give this up forever. I can't do this ever again. I want to go to heaven. I want to walk with God. I want to be intimate with God. I want God to be intimate to me. I want him to give me the assurance of salvation, which I don't have because I'm doing this infrequently, moderately, or maybe even addicted. God, please give me the grace to move from a temporary no to a permanent, never to be separated from you again by virtue of PMO. I hope this video and previous videos will go a long way toward helping many, 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 many hundreds of thousands of men, I hope, across the world to be liberated from this habit and practice and addiction so that they can be liberated, be set free, and walk intimately and, and, uh, and with freedom and joy and a peaceful conscience before God and before others. If this has been of help to you, please consider... Um, pausing this video, sending it to this person, that person, someone over perhaps in the, uh, Europe or South Africa or South America or California, or maybe even next door. But uh, there are many, many men that you know probably who suffer and struggle with this. If you find this helpful, please pass it along to them. And if you would like to subscribe, you can do that below and maybe encourage them to subscribe as well as we continue to unpack these matters with future videos. Thanks for being with me today.